Welcome to the Macmillan Report. I'm Marilyn Wilkes, your host, and our guest is Catherine Panterbrick, a professor of anthropology, health, and global affairs at Yale University. Professor Panterbrick's research consists of critical analyses of health and well-being across key stages of human development, giving special attention to the impact of poverty, disease, malnutrition, armed conflict, and social marginalization. Her focus on children in global adversity has included biocultural research with street children, refugees, and war-affected adolescents. She has published widely on child and adolescent health, including articles on conflict and mental health in Afghanistan, household decision-making and infant survival in famine-stricken Niger, the social ecology of growth retardation in Nepali slums, biomarkers of stress in the context of violence and homelessness, and the effectiveness of public health and humanitarian interventions. Today, we talk with Professor Panterbrick about research she's done on the role fathers play in parenting. Welcome, Professor Panterbrick. Thank you, Marilyn. It's a pleasure to be here. So let's start with an overview of the work. Tell us about it. So we um, completed a study on uh, of parenting interventions globally around the world mm -hmm. that engage with men in their role as fathers. Okay. Um, and fathers matters for many, many different reasons. Mm -hmm. They matter for children, for families, and for global citizenship. And we argue in this study that um, it's the father factor that we forget to leverage in mothering and in parenting interventions that are essentially gender blind and focus on mothers instead mm -hmm. of co-parents. And so we call this the father factor or the forgotten father factor mm -hmm. in uh, research practice and policy. Okay, and what kind of interventions did you look at? We looked at um, uh, mostly parenting interventions that are, uh, there's a huge diversity of interventions throughout the world. So mm -hmm. there are uh, home-based visit, hospital-based uh, interventions, community-based intervention, interventions to bring inmates or uh, socioeconomically disadvantaged uh, parents or first-time parents who haven't married the mothers all on board for effectively care, mm -hmm. uh, caregiving of the child. And um, there, I think there's three levels at which fathers matter. Okay. Um, the first is for the child, so they matter for their uh, social, uh, emotional, and physical well-being. Mm -hmm. They matter for their educational outcomes. They matter for their life satisfaction, for their capacity, for empathy, and all those aspects that we know well. They also matter for the families, for mothers, and helping uh, mothers and the issue of gender equity in the home. And uh, I think the most exciting dimension is they matter for global citizenship because the way that uh, a child has been raised influences the way that child raises their children. Mm -hmm. And so you have uh, parental skills, social skills, mental health, uh, disposition to violence, all cascading from one generation to the other. Mm -hmm. So if you take settings uh, like conflict mm -hmm. settings, you have a perpetuation of violence or the ability to break um, the transmission of violence from one generation to the other through raising our children more effectively. Mm -hmm. We simply argue that fathers have been forgotten in that equation, that they've been, that their role is sometimes sidelined and sometimes undermined. Mm -hmm. And we want to cast more attention on those. Okay, so what was the um, impetus behind you taking on this work? So it was really a partnership between scholars, practitioners, and uh, advocates for policy making. Mm -hmm. um, in the study that we published in the Journal of Child, uh, psychology and psychiatry. There are six team members. Um, four of them are at Yale from the Yale Child Study Center, mm -hmm. the Macmillan Center, Anthropology and Jackson Institute, and two of them are from the Fatherhood Institute in London. Mm -hmm. um, and so as well it was inserted within a wider conversation with NGOs that are invested in the caregiving of children and big organization like UNICEF. Mm -hmm. um, it was really prompted by uh, a conversation we had with the Turkish Mother Child Foundation who have implemented mother support programs, workshops uh, that uh, are geared towards mothers and their children for 25 years in, in Turkey and uh, a program that's implemented at national level. 
And uh, they have just recently launched a father support program because the Turkish mothers came to the organization and said, look, we can't implement everything that you taught us at home with our children if the men are going to be obstacles at home. So please bring them on board. So they had this father support group, which is originally auxiliary. And then they discovered that fathers really, really matter. Mm -hmm. And so I think they were the one who made us stumble upon the importance of fathers. But we were the one who set that evidence on a scientific Right. Uh, global perspective. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about the methodology of, of your work. So the methodology was uh, a systematic review of the literature. So we really had to do two kinds of searches. One of them is the very standard literature search. Over what time period? Um, just one year. Okay. I mean, f I mean, we took a year, but the, the parenting interventions are those that exist forever. Okay. And um, that captures the very best known interventions in the world today. And then we did a a second search, a thematic search, to get to the most, um, to, to the ones that don't, don't get published in the literature and mm -hmm. discovered parenting interventions in places like Ukraine, Peru, Niger, Jordan, Pakistan, um, and other places. How so did you get at that those. secondary level? I mean, through, that seems um, it would be difficult to, to yeah, find through, out. Through, through contacts, okay. through websites, through uh, one a good example are the UNICEF programs that are rolled out across the okay. world, so uh, through detective work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that two-pronged <laughs> approach between the systematic and the, the sleuth right. finding put those articles together. So in the end, we ended up with a 1,000 articles that were parenting interventions with dads on board, mm -hmm. not just mothering interventions, and we dis in about uh, 20 different countries. Mm -hmm. And we looked at those pretty closely. Okay. So... <clears throat> what do you think the implications of this study are? Well, for, for one, it's, um, it's uh, not a very good idea to sideline the importance of fathers. Okay. And for second, uh, we need uh, a policy change at the highest level in terms of the design of our interventions that can sideline them. Um, so we have no means of really effectively... Um, evaluating or engaging with men. And it's not that we want to just engage with men as opposed to mothers, but we want to leverage co-parenting if possible. Mm -hmm. And we want to find out, find out what works best in particular, particular context. So to give you an example, uh, my favorite example is the, in Niger, um, école de mari, which means school for husbands, mm -hmm. which men join when they get married in order to get schooled into the skills of being fathers and husbands. And they learn about ge gender equity and their power to, um, to give children access to education and care. Mm -hmm. So of course men are the decision makers, so the stakes are very high, but it's a lovely way of bringing on board the men. Mm -hmm. Another good example in Brazil is the work from Instituto Profundo Promundo that looks at um, ways of, of redefining the masculinity of men so that they move away from a disposition of violence and domestic violence mm -hmm. inside their home and really become effective caregivers and uh, more, have more equitable relationships with their partner. Mm -hmm. um, so we, uh, there are interventions that really demonstrate that um, fatherhood is a transformative moment for men, mm -hmm. um, that they want to raise their children in a different way and we can move them away from that disposition of violence, harsh parenting, disciplining masculinity uh, worldview towards one that makes them really engage in raising the generation, mm -hmm. uh, next generation for, for um, empathetic and peaceful, more peaceful young men and women, right. which we think is very important. Of course, it sounds, um, you know, very idealistic, and I, I wonder, you know, in thinking of certain countries, it must be very difficult to institute those kinds of changes in certain places in the world that have, um, from a cultural pr perspective, men being very, um, you know, the ruler. You know. Yeah, they're, they're macho. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. But, um, <laughs> but you, you are... I mean, how do you work around that? That seems one like very, very interesting um, way of doing things that we don't know if fits the best, but mm -hmm. it's one that seems to prove good in certain respects, is a men-only workshop, mm -hmm. where instead of, of bringing 
women and men together, you give a, a, a platform for men to discuss these issues. And they're quite surprised to find that other men have these kinds of problems, etc., and find their strategies, find strategies to move forward. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes, things are very difficult. A great example would be Northern Ireland for um, peace building in terms of bringing together groups of Catholics and Protestants that are coming to the table with the same idea, which is that their children should not go through that, and they have to raise their children in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, and so these, sometimes these men-only men group or even co-parent groups, you, you learn to overcome the stereotype that you might have towards the other, which is why we certainly think that um, men-only group or co-parent group might be more effective than just home visits, mm -hmm. because they make you relate to other people across the ethnic, religious, or social divide. Right. And that has the potential for breaking down some stereotypes. Mm -hmm. And we do find that in certain places in the world. And um, you know, you have to have the same aspiration for your children. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a, a very good pathway. So we have a book coming out, myself, Jim Lechman, and Rima Saleh at UNICEF called Pathways to Peace, mm -hmm. where we put together this idea or review the concrete evidence that um, we go from the biology of the brain to peace building um, in ways that the, the, you know, the, the standard idea is that the way we raise our children will matter for health and social development. Now the big new idea, the bold idea, is that the way we raise our children will matter for peace building. And, uh, and, and that's mm -hmm. a hot subject. Right. And the conversation is really percolating at the highest levels of policy making. Mm -hmm. Um, for instance, in the United Nations, there's great excitement at this idea that we could do peace building through grassroots uh, family and children focused policies. Mm -hmm. now, that seems to be a nice pathway that's practical, grounded, and yet uh, achieves the big goals mm -hmm. of uh, making the world a better place for our children right now without losing more time. Right. It sounds like a wonderful idea. Um, I just wonder how how difficult it is to actually implement. You know, for instance, I think of, um, you know, I just was speaking with someone about the Central um, Africa Republic, which of course is, you know, in the midst of a war, and um, it's a very diffuse situation. So that comes to mind where, in terms of, you know, um, in terms of the policy that you're speaking about would probably work very well there, but I'm wondering how difficult it is to get those kinds of programs grow, you know, going. Yeah. Well, we think it um, is a matter of having some advocates and, and mm -hmm. partnership between the media, mm -hmm. um, the parents themselves, and the, and the structures to, to enable them, to give them the wherewithal to raise their children right. in that possible way. But a great example of media action, for instance, would be the African Fatherhood Initiative that puts out posters with a man and a baby saying it takes a man to be a dad. Mm -hmm. And that's a lovely way of saying dads don't think that babies are the, the realm of women. Right. Um, because uh, we know from the biology of parenting or caregiving that it takes about 15 minutes for hormonal change to happen to a man when you give a baby. And the more experienced the, the man is as a father, the quicker these hormonal changes are happening, pr pr principally oxytocin, the hormone of love. And that primes a man to uh, move away from competition and aggression to care and love. Mm -hmm. So we think we can leverage some kind of biology mm -hmm. in having men engage with babies so that the attachment is very strong and basically structure the brains of men and babies mm -hmm. in ways that prime them towards empathy and social relationship rather than aggression, fear, and punishment. Mm -hmm. um, I think that is an important piece of the scientific evidence. But that alone is not going to make it happen. So we have, um, with partners, established a or advocated towards an early child consortium and peace building mm -hmm. consortium. And it was launched at the UN a year ago. We go back to the UN very regularly. Uh, there was the, international, the anniversary of the International Year of the Family. Most recently, there was the United Nations General Assembly Forum on Peace. And so these conversations are, are happening at the very high level as well as in particular places in disadvantaged neighborhoods like in, in Turkey, in Brazil, in Niger, and in um, Central African Republic. Okay. Okay. So I think the, the, the global picture 
there's there's a will there to mm -hmm. change things, and we just need to see the wherewithal. The the big point is that um, parenting skills are not just mothering skills. That the uh, we need to have better means of leveraging that father factor that we think is really the missing ingredient, the game change in a parenting mm -hmm. intervention would be to um, bring on board the men just as strongly as you've brought on board the women. And if I can give you another example sure. of a media campaign, there's the he for she mm -hmm. campaign, meaning that you don't look after women by just advocating, f uh, just having the women advocate for themselves, it's engaging the men that really is the game change or really matters. Mm -hmm. So it's that vision um, and that, uh, and then putting the policies that, that don't undermine that vision that is really important. Mm -hmm. And the excitement, I think, is when the science and the policy and the practice are coming all together and not at odds with each other. Right. And I think that moment is coming. Right. I agree. So that's great. Well, thank you very much for being here today and sharing some of your work. It's fascinating. Thank you, uh, Marilyn. So we need to make the most of fathers, I believe. Yes, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Marilyn. For more information about Professor Panterbrook and her work, please visit our website at yale.edu slash Macmillan Report. Be sure to join us again for another episode of the Macmillan Report, made possible through funding from the Whitney and Betty Macmillan Center for International and Area Studies at Yale.